Welcome to the Protagonist Pub. My name is Tammy, and this is where characters gather. So, we're going to talk about my July purchases this month. And, um, I didn't think there were that many, because there are not that many physical. Um, there were, however, a lot of Kindle purchases. And most of those purchases were at the beginning of the month and they were part of the rom-com collection of free on Kindle for, to purchase on Kindle for the 4th of July. So I'm not going to talk about any of those in great detail, but I will talk about a couple of Kindle purchases this month in detail, and I will put a picture of every book I mention up here in the corner. Um, and I will try and timestamp this video into sections. So if you want to skip the digital purchases and go to physicals, that's fine. So the first purchase of the month was um, Sunrise by Susan May Warren. It is the first in the Sky King Ranch series. Um, haven't read it. I'm very interested in it. I know a lot of you have. I know it's a four-part series. So, book one is waiting for me. Happy about that. Second book is Assisting Lord Richmond, a proper Regency romance adventure. It is a Northcott kinship book. And it is related to the Northcott series, which is a seven book series. I have not read anything by this author. The author is Wendy May Andrews. I briefly looked at the seven book series. I'm interested in those as well. So I need to figure all of that out. And we will see. Next up was Every Dog Has His Day by Janice Thompson. This is the fifth book in the Gone to the Dog series. It is a Christian cozy series set in Texas. It's about dogs. I'm all about dogs in Texas and cozy, so I'm happy about that one. Um, and now we're getting into the 4th of July books. Um, first one is Falling for Your Best Friend. Oh, okay, you're fine. Falling for Your Best Friend by Emma St. Clair. This is book number five in the Love Cl Clichés um, Sweet Rom-Com series. Um, it's an Emma St. Clair. I will love it. I need to read the other four books. Not a problem. I love Emma St. Clair. Next is Dizzy in Love. It is a Creekville Kisses 2 series by Brittany Larson. I have never read anything by Brittany Larson. So that will be an adventure. The next one is The Art of Falling in Love with Your Best Friend. It is by Ann Kemp. Again, never anything by Ann Kemp, but we will see. The next book is So Not My Thing, A Love in New Orleans, book one by Melanie Jacobson. I've never read anything by her. Next is Alone Together by Lindsay... Jessonkowski. This is Win in West Virginia, book one. I haven't read anything by her. The next book is Falling for Prince Charming. It is book number one in the Wilson Charm series by Sophie Leah Robbins. Again, new to me author. Next book is Look Again. It is a Chamberlain Academy book by Becca Wilhite. I don't know anything about this book. I've never read anything by this author, so we will see. The next book is Not Happy Campers. It is the first book in the Road Trip to Love series by Ash Keller. New to me author. Don't know anything about the book. We will see. And next up is Belonging with Her Best Friend. A California Dreaming Book 4 by Christian Canary. Don't know anything about the author. Don't know anything about the book or the series. So we will see. Um, 
Housemate by Leah Bruner is book number two in the Under Kansas Sky series. New to me author, new to me series. We will see. The next one is The Hate Zone. It is the first book in the Preco Brothers series by Gigi Bloom. Again, don't know anything. The next book is The Even Otter Couple. It is the fourth book in the Apple Valley Love Stories by Julie Christensen. New to me author, new to me series, new to me everything. Next book is Love is a Battlefield. It is the first book in the Seven Brides for Seven Mothers series by Whitney Deenan. Again, don't know. Next is One Last First Kiss, a cozy cottage cafe um, book. It is the first book in the series by Kate O'Keefe. New to me author, new to me series. We will see. Next book is Matched with Her Runaway Groom. Uh, it is a Love Austin series by uh, Brittany M. Mills. Don't know anything. We will see. Next book is Love Unexpected. It is some kind of it is in the Some Kind of Love series, and that is by Jenny Proctor, who I do know very well and who I will undoubtedly love immensely. So, no qualms there. Next up is a fun old-fashioned family Christmas by Julie Control. Her name is familiar, but I can't remember reading anything by her. And this is a Christmas book, so we will see. And then um, Shoes to Fill, which is a Hope Southern Adventures. It is the second book in the series by Lynn Gentry. Again, don't know this author. Need to read book one first, so we will see. Then the last book I'm going to mention and not discuss in detail on Kindle is a The Borrow a Bookshop Holiday um, by Kylie Dunbar. This looks very sweet and charming, so it's probably right up my alley. We will see. So, um, now on to the ones I'm going to talk in detail. <coughs> I'm also going to talk, too. So, this one keeps showing up on my feed, as you will probably be interested in this, because of based on what you've read. And that is Limoncello Yellow, a private investigator comedy mystery by... Tracy Angretti. It is the first book in the Frankie Amato mystery series. It has a very cute cover. Um, I will read you a br brief blurb. Uh, Frankie's first Mardi Gras is murder. Francesca, Frankie Amato, is a straight shooting rookie cop in Austin, Texas, until an embarrassing 911 call prompts her to take a job at her best friend's PI agency in New Orleans. But Frankie soon, soon learns that solving crime in the Big Easy is no Bourbon Street party. Case in point, her first investigation involves the murder of a beautiful boutique manager who was strangled with a cheap yellow scarf and her primary suspect is her client. This does sound right up my alley. It does sound like something I will enjoy, so I'm looking forward to that one. Um, the next is The Shoes of a Fisherman by Morris L. West. This is the first book in the Vatican Trilogy. I will read you the summary. The Pope is dead, and the corridors of the Vac Vatican hum with intrigue as cardinals gather to, just to elect his successor. The result is a surprise. The new Pope is the youngest of all of them, a bearded Ukrainian the Shoes of the Fisherman is the moving story of Kirill I, recently released from 17 years in a Siberian labor camp and haunted by his past. Not only is he the leader of a fractured Catholic church, but he also finds that he must confront his inquisitor and tormentor in order to avert another world war. I'm very interested in this book. I'm, I'm, I'm not going to lie. I'm very interested in this book. So, the next book I purchased was An Elegant Facade by Christiane Hunter. This is book number two in the Hawthorne House series. 
and I can't wait. I love the first book in this series, which was A Noble Masquerade. I'll read you a brief. Lady Georgina Hawthorne has always known she must marry well. After years of tirelessly planning every detail of her debut season, she is poised to be a smashing success and have her choice of eligible gentlemen. With money and powerful business connections, but no title, Colin McRae is invited everywhere, but accepted nowhere. He intends to marry someday, but when he does, it will not be to a shallow woman like Lady Georgina, whose only concern appear to be status and appearance. Based on A Noble Masquerade, I'm going to love this book. I have absolutely no doubt I'm going to love this book. So the next book I bought is another Christiane Hunter book. It's right here, A Pursuit of Home, which is the third book in the Haven Manor series. I have not read books one and two. I do not own books one and two, so obviously I need to rectify that before I read this one. But I will read you a brief blurb. In early 1800s England, Jess Beauchin has spent most of her life in hiding and always on the move in an effort to leave her past behind her. But when she learns the family she thought had died just might have just might be alive and in danger, she knows her secrets can only stay buried so long. Derek Thornberry loves the past, which has led him to become an expert in history and artifacts. He knows Jess has never liked him, but when she requests his help, deciphering the clues laid out in an old family diary, he cannot resist the urge to solve the puzzle. I am very, very, very interested in the series. I trust Christiane in the historical timeline, so... I am looking forward to that. And the last Kindle purchase, again, makes no sense for me. It is Your My Kind of Home. It is book number seven in the Rescue Me series. Um, she is a new to me author. I have not read books one through six. Obviously, I'm going to have to do that before I read book number seven, but I will read you a little bit. Coming home will always give you a second chance. When Riley Layton and Levi Duncan finally meet again, the chemistry between them is as hot as ever. But as much as Levi has missed Riley all these years, he still remembers the heartbreak when she left him the first time. Riley has spent a lifetime running from love. Now that she is home again, starting her dream job at the local pet rescue, she has another chance to get it right with Levi. Everything Riley wanted but thought she couldn't have is almost within reach. This sounds like something I'm gonna love. Pets, love, yeah. So, I need to read the other six so I can read that one. Those were my Kindle purchases. Okay, so the next four books are library finds. I am collecting these slowly from the Friends of the Library store. I haven't talked about the, I haven't talked about the first two I'll talk about the, the scratch that. I'll talk about the guidepost books first. Um, these appear every once in a while in the Friends of the Library series. I've shown them in previous falls. Um, in July, they had um, books four and five of the what are these tea room mysteries. The first book number four is Crosswords and Chamomile. And a gorgeous cover. And book number five is Burning Secrets. Um, they're both new to me authors. I like the fact that they, I'm guessing cats are going to be a theme in this series. I do not have books one through three and Kalua is messing with the camera. But I do very much appreciate the fact that, I don't know if you can tell, on the spine it mentioned, it, you know, it clearly states that those are books four and five. Let me fetch the... So, uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to these. See if I can get a hold of, you know, eventually collect the first three books in the series. Mm, time will tell. 
So the next two books are part of the Annie's Attic subscription cozy mysteries and there are, are a ton of series and that's in that um, subscription options. These appear regularly in my library. I am collecting them as I see them. Um, I haven't shown these before. I will someday do an entire video strictly for these books. Um, this time around I picked up these are both in the Scottish Bakehouse Mysteries, which I don't have any of. Um, this one is If Looks Could Kilt. And the second one is A Shepherd's Life. Both of these are by Elizabeth Penny. I, uh, these are very nice books. Oh! This one, If Looks Could Kilt, is book two. Shepherd's Lie is book six. Um, I wish. I mean, these are these are very nice books. All of these, I, all of these books in the series, they all come with a um, ribbon bookmark. They are all hardback. They all have gorgeous covers. I wish, however, they would, you know, on the spine. Um, Put what number they are in the series. This is the first series. I haven't had to go physically look up on a different site what the order was. They're not normally in the front of the book so I'm very impressed that they were in the front of these. Um, I have read one or two of them. And they are clean cozies that are completely unobjectable. Okay, so um, I'm going to do secular purchases first, and then I'm going to do Christian purchases first for physical books. The first two are library purchases. Um, the first one is The Master by Colm Tobin. And I will read you the back. Like Michael... Mm, Uh, okay, so beautiful and profoundly moving. The master tells the story of a man bo born into Amer one of America's first intellectual families who leaves his country in the late 19th century to live in Paris, Rome, Venice, and London among privileged artists and writers. In stunningly resonant prose, Tobin captures the loneliness and the hope of a master of psychological subtlety who forays into the intimate into intimacy inevitably failed those he tried to love. The emotional intensity of this portrait is riveting. I've never read anything by this author. I don't know much about this book. I know that people who have read it love it. We will see. It, it was a friend's library pickup. It wasn't a huge investment, obviously. So if, if it ends up not being something I enjoy, it's no harm, no foul. And the last find at the um, library um, floored the nice lady who checked it out. Um, I believe this is the first book. Um, that is Pillars of the Earth by Ken Follett. This is in the Knightsbridge series. Um, and <clears throat> I will read you a synopsis. Um, Pillars, of the Earth, Pil Pillars of the Earth tells the story of Philip, prior of Knights Kingsbridge, a devout and resourceful monk driven to build the greatest Gothic cathedral the world has ever known. Of Tom... The mason who becomes his architect, a man divided in his soul, of the beautiful, elusive Lady Alina, haunted by a secret shame, and of a struggle between good and evil that will turn church against state and brother against brother. A spellbinding tale of ambition, anarchy, and absolute power 
set against the sprawling medieval canvas of 12th century England. This is Ken Follett's historical masterpiece. Um, I loved the miniseries. I had been waiting years to read this. This one is in perfect condition. It is a big old honker. It is 900 and no, that's excerpt, then count. 971 pages of pure joy. Um, Follett is just a beautiful writer and I've loved everything I've ever read by him so I am very much looking forward to that. So my last secular purchase was on my is a book from my 2023 reading challenge and that was to read a book set in Central or South America and that is The Seven Sisters by Lucinda Riley. First of all the cover is gorgeous. It continues on the spine and Lovely enough, they have numbered the spine with a one. So kudos to the publisher for that. Um, this is the first book in a seven book series. There is an eighth book that was just released, which tells the story of the father, but it is not written by Riley, who has passed away. It, I believe, is authorized by the estate. Do not have books two through six, seven, um, or book eight. I shall be getting them, I believe. So I'll read you the back. Mia de Alpolis and her five sisters gather together at their childhood home, a fabulous secluded castle situated on the shores of Lake Geneva. Having been told that their beloved adoptive father, the elusive billionaire they call Paul Salt, has died. Each of them has handed a tantalizing clue to their true heritage, a clue which takes Mia across the world to a crumbling mansion in Rio de Janeiro in Brazil. Eighty years earlier, in the Belle Epoque of Rio, 1927, Isabella Bonificio's father has aspirations for his daughter to marry into aristocracy. But Isabella longs for adventure and convinces him to allow her to accompany the family of a renowned architect on a trip to Paris. In the heady, vibrant streets of Montparnasse, she meets the ambitious young sculptor, Laurent Broly, and knows at once that her life will never be the same again. I'm very much looking forward to this. Hopefully most of it is, you know, we'll see if it's truly set in Central or South America or if it's adjacent and I have to read something else, but I'm still looking forward to it. And we will see. So the last two physical purchases were our Christian fiction and um, they are in part thanks to Katie over at Paperbacks and Ponytails and her enthusiasm for both of these books. So the first one is The Metropolitan Affair by Jocelyn Green. Um, this is published by Bethany House. Um, it is a 1920s archaeological historical mystery fiction. I'm so looking forward to this book. So looking forward to this book. And the next one is The All American by Susie Finkbeiner. Um, cover is stunning. I love baseball. I, I love baseball. Um, I, I'm a lifelong Dodgers fan and tell this year in which I don't need to explain why I'm no longer a Dodgers fan and I no longer support Major League Baseball but it does not change the fact that I love baseball and this is worth reading the back cover for. It is 1952 and nearly all the girls Bertha Harding knows dream of getting married, keeping house, and raising children. Bertha dreams of baseball. 
She reads every story in the sports section. She plays ball with the neighborhood boys. She even writes letters to the pitcher for the Workington Sweet Peas, part of the All-American Girls Professional Baseball League. When Bertha's father is accused of being part of the Communist Party by the House Un-American Activities Committee, life comes crashing down. But dreams are hard to kill. And when Bertha gets a chance to try out for the Workington Sweet Peas, she packs her bags for an adventure she will never forget. Sign me up. I'm going to read this probably in August. Perfect time. It's my birthday. It's baseball. I can, you know, turn on um, after I finish this. A League of Their Own and, you know joyfully watch that and stitch so um i'm pleased as punch so those are the purchases for july of 2023 most of them were digital that's okay i don't really like digital purchases because i can't share them afterwards but sometimes you just gotta do what you gotta do okay Quick addendum because I forgot to mention these two when I filmed the rest of the video. Um, this month I also picked up Aberration by Kathy McCrom. This one is in hardback, recorder is in paperback, but the deal on this one was phenomenal and couldn't wait any longer. I love it. I loved it. The review is linked to my blog down below, like always. Um, and I also picked up um, this month's, or August, book club book, which is West with Giraffes by Linda Rutledge. This was chosen by Michelle. I have never heard of this author or this book, so I will read you the back. Woodrow Wilson Nickel, age 105, fills his life ebbing away. But when he learns giraffes are going extinct, he finds himself recalling the unforgettable experience he cannot take to his grave. It is 1938. The Great Depression lingers. Hitler is threatening Europe, and world-weary Americans long for wonder. They find it in two giraffes who miraculously survive a hurricane while crossing the Atlantic. What follows is a 12-day road trip in a custom truck to deliver Southern California's first giraffes to the San Diego Zoo. Behind the wheel is a young Dust Bowl rowdy Woodrow. Inspired by two events, the tale weaves real-life figures with fictional ones, including the world's first female zoo director, a crusty old man with a past, a young female photographer with a secret, and assorted reprobates as spotty as the giraffes. Part adventure, part historical saga, and part coming-of-age love story, West with Giraffes explores what it means to be changed by the grace of animals, the kindness of strangers, the passing of time, and a story told before it's too late. I think it sounds interesting. It was published very recently. I want to say 2022. Yeah, 2021. So I'm a little skeptical about the content. Time will tell. So thank you for the addition. Dave is playing video games in the background. If you can hear them, I apologize. But such is life. And now back to our regular scheduled content. So, did you find any gems I need to know about in July? If so, please leave a comment down below, like and subscribe. And I will see you here next time at the Protagonist Pub.